sleeper cars are some of my favorite cars. Cars that really don't look very assuming, but are actually incredibly fast or performant. And today I'm gonna to talk about five in particular that depreciated pretty well and continue to do so. So if like me, you like sleeper cars, then do hit the like button and subscribe as well if you're new. Without further ado, let's get straight into it. <laughs> Lexus are incredibly good at making cars that punch well above their weight in terms of performance and that's exactly what they've done with the luxury LS500H. Despite being a full-size luxury car which weighs almost 2,200 kilograms, it really does have some decent performance thanks to its 3.5 litre V6 engine combined with hybrid electric power to produce 353 brake horsepower total, taking it to 60 in 5.2 seconds. This came with the 5th generation Lexus LS with some previous generations gaining cult classic status also for being sleepers in their own rights. Sadly, we didn't get the LS500 here in the UK with the twin turbo V6, but the hybrid works better with the way things are going right now anyway, and it's not like you'll be lacking in the performance department anyway. Aesthetically, it's a good looking car, but it's not shouty in the slightest. I don't think you'd give it a second look, which is why both its performance and luxury are kind of overlooked. When you add on the competitors in its class like the S-Class, Tesla Model S, BMW 7 Series, Jag XJ, and Porsche Panamera, it's quite clear to see why it's overlooked. Most of those cars are far more assuming than this beast, but that's not to say that they're any better. This car is super luxurious inside, with some reviews going as far as comparing the quality and finish to Rolls Royces, which is very high praise. In top spec models, there are even hand pleated inserts in the doors which reference the Japanese tradition of origami. Add on the incredible torsion and rigidity that you get out of these cars thanks to the platform which it comes from, being from the LC500 Coupe sports car, and you actually have a car that handles well too. These cost around £47,000 at the bottom end with £50,000 being enough for a 2019 model with around 30,000 miles on the clock. What makes life even better is the reliability on these, not just a record from Lexus, but also that engine. These cars should be able to run for many years to come. Next up, we have the only SUV on the list. In this case, it's the Volvo XC60 T8 Polestar Engineered, which is a 2-litre turbocharged inline 4 engine with an electric motor to produce a combined 399 brake horsepower, taking it from 0 to 60 in 5.2 seconds, matching the Lexus, which is again not bad for a car of its size. I've spoken before about the V60 and the V90, well this car sits on the same basic platform and shares the same engine and electric motor setup as those cars. The T8 spec is the most aggressive of the bunch in terms of performance and the Polestar additions help to tune the car to handle well for a car of its size. It competes with cars like the BMW X3M and the Mercedes GLC 63 AMG and in its most aggressive spec which is slightly out of the price range of this video it actually gains an additional 50 horsepower and will get to 60 half a second faster, making a properly punchy car for the money. It can also run as an EV exclusively for around 36 miles, which is pretty solid for city folk like myself, and it remains a highly unassuming car visually. The only real giveaways of the performance come in the nicer alloys and the little Polestar engineered logo in the grille and on the rear. The thing is, as it's an unassuming Volvo that you wouldn't expect to be quick, it also drives a bit boringly, at least according to reviews. The focus is more on consistency and simplicity, so some have complained about a lack of emotion in the driving experience with a stiff bride plus the charging speeds are also complained about by some owners for being too slow. These are only around £44,000 at the bottom end and £50,000 will get you into a 2021 model with around 10,000 miles on the clock. Reliability wise they are very new but have been solid so far and Volvo have definitely proven to make some of the safest cars on the market too. Taking third on this list we have an interesting and slightly different car from VW with a newer nameplate, the RTN R, which comes with a 2 litre turbocharged inline 4 engine making 315 brake horsepower which will get to 60 in 4.7 seconds, pretty decent, helped by the fact that it's all-wheel drive. The RTN came to replace the CC, which in itself was originally introduced to be the Comfort Coupe version of the Passat. It is meant to sit higher in the VW lineup than the CC ever did though, as a more upmarket version of that car. It comes with both a liftback and estate body style, with the estate looking pretty shooting brake-like in terms of its stylings, and personally I actually think both look really good, though of course not particularly shouty, hence the sleeper status, plus the fact that it's a slightly newer nameplate for VW helps to mean that people don't know what to expect from one. And of course, when you want a fast VW, you get yourself an R, and the RTN R was launched in 2020 exclusively with the DSG automatic gearbox and with very subtle stylings, meaning that for me, it's probably one of VW's best sleepers available right now. Some reviews actually complained about how the car doesn't look or sound as aggressive as it actually is when you plant your foot, but that just adds to the car's sleeper status. And for me personally, with a nice, clean and simple R styling on the interior too, 
do. It's one of my favourite VWR cars available right now. These are listed anywhere from around the £37,000 mark, while £50,000 will get you into a 2023 model with 2,000 miles on the clock, so effectively just run in for you. Of course, that 2 litre turbo inline 4 is very well known by now too, so you can expect pretty solid reliability out of these. Plus, it is the newest car on the list, so it's the most likely car to be getting a manufacturer's warranty with. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you are a quick reminder, do hit the like button if you like sleeper cars like I do and subscribe as well if you're new for two videos every single week. And don't forget carswithjb.com for the merch as well. Coming second in this video, we have the Mercedes S600L, a massive class leading luxury car with some pretty understated external looks, but an unbelievable 6 litre twin turbocharged V12 engine, which puts out 522 brake horsepower, taking it from 0 to 60 in 4.5 seconds. Not what might immediately be expected from a non-AMG luxury luxury Merc. It's not a car you'll see much of out on the roads because there are fewer than 150 of them registered right now in the UK, not that you'd mostly be able to tell exactly what it is, as it looks just like a long wheelbase S-Class. And outside of that engine, in most ways that's exactly what it is. If I look at the standard S-Class, even as a car person, I know I'm looking at a chauffeur car that will take wealthy people around from place to place. If it has an AMG badge, I know it's got a little Sutton sign below the bonnet. If it hasn't got that badge, there's no way I'm expecting that V12, which is also found in the Maybach version of the S-Class 2. It did get some specific options like the touchpad, heads-up display, electric windscreen heating and the rest, but these just add on to the existing set of ridiculous luxuries available on S-Classes, and given this is the flagship Mercedes as well as the flagship full-size luxury car, there are many. Personally, of all the cars on this list, this is the only one that I wouldn't consider buying unless I had someone to drive me. The other luxury cars that appear on this list have a little more driver focus, but given the size of this and the luxury on offer, it feels a shame to not enjoy it how it's meant to be enjoyed, from a rear passenger seat with a glass of champagne from the little integrated mini fridge. These start at around £40,000 and £50,000 will get you into a 2016 example with around 70,000 miles on the clock, making it the most used car on the list. Reliability wise, there's not much on these, but it's a specialist engine, so will require a good maintenance history and ongoing maintenance unless you want some expensive repair bills. Taking the top spot in this video by a long way thanks to its performance is this, the Audi S8 Plus, which is the most aggressive version of the D4 A8 generation. That's thanks to its 4 litre twin turbocharged V8 engine which makes 596 brake horsepower which is taken from 0 to 60 in just 3.7 seconds which is again mental for a full size luxury car. In plus spec the car gained an additional 80 horsepower over the standard S8 which came by remapping the car to increase turbo boost and fuel delivery in the engine. You also could get the S8 Plus with carbon ceramic brakes for extra stopping power and optional carbon fibre stylings around the car. Because it's a full size luxury car again the stylings aren't over the top though and if you didn't go for the carbon fiber you could find yourself a car that looks more similar to the a8 but has this car's ridiculous level of performance i'm not exactly sure why you would do this though as the s8's benefit is that it's a mad quick performance luxury car not a specific luxury car so it would be nice to spec it for performance in comparison the a8 lw12 is the more luxury focused version of the car which isn't as quick so if you want luxury go a8l and if you want pace and a bit of aggression and go S8+. Plus. One other thing that separates the S8 Plus from the standard S8 though is that it wasn't actually built on the regular assembly line alongside the A8s. Instead, it was built by Audi Sport, so it got that extra level of care that you might attribute to them. £43,000 is the minimum you'll find these listed for, and for £50,000 you'll be looking at a 2016 model with around 30,000 miles on the clock. On reliability, these have generally been very good, but some owners have had suspension or turbo issues with them from what I could see on forums. And so there you have it. That is five depreciated sleeper cars you can get for under £50,000. Massive thanks to you guys for watching and to the patrons that continue to support. And if you want to watch a video on some cheaper sleeper cars, then click up here and subscribe down here.